Plants are everywhere. From the towering trees that touch the sky to the colorful flowers that brighten our gardens and even the soft mosses that carpet the forest floor. They come in all shapes, sizes, and colors, creating a vibrant tapestry of life that surrounds us. They make our world beautiful. Imagine walking through a garden filled with the scent of blooming flowers, or a forest where every leaf and petal adds to the symphony of nature's beauty. But did you know that plants have a secret? Beneath their serene and static appearance, plants are constantly working, growing, and even communicating in ways that are truly fascinating. They have amazing ways of making new plants. It's called reproduction. This process ensures that new generations of plants can continue to thrive and fill our world with life. Some plants use flowers to reproduce. These flowers attract pollinators like bees, butterflies, and birds, which help in the transfer of pollen from one flower to another, leading to the creation of seeds. But some plants don't need flowers at all. They have other ingenious methods to ensure their survival and propagation. Let's learn about these cool plants. From ferns that reproduce through spores to conifers that use cones, the diversity of plant reproduction is truly astounding. Plants need to reproduce to keep their species alive. Without reproduction, there would be no new plants to replace the old ones, and our world would slowly lose its greenery. Imagine a world without new trees or flowers. That would be sad. A barren landscape devoid of life and color, where the beauty of nature is just a distant memory. Reproduction ensures that we can always enjoy the beauty and benefits of plants. It allows us to walk through lush forests, enjoy the shade of a tree, and marvel at the diversity of plant life in botanical gardens. So how do plants without flowers make new plants? Through fascinating processes like spore dispersal and seed release, these plants have adapted to thrive in their environments. Get ready for an adventure. We're about to dive deep into the world of plant reproduction and discover the incredible strategies plants use to ensure their survival. We're about to find out. Join us as we explore the amazing world of plants and uncover the secrets of their reproduction. Let's talk about spores. These tiny, often invisible particles are the unsung heroes of the plant world. They play a crucial role in the life cycle of many plants, especially ferns and mosses. They are like tiny specks of plant magic. Spores are produced in large quantities and are incredibly lightweight, allowing them to travel great distances. You can't even see them without a microscope. Under magnification, they reveal intricate and fascinating structures, each designed to ensure the survival and spread of the plant species. Ferns and mosses have spores. These plants don't produce flowers or seeds like many others. Instead, they rely on spores to reproduce and spread. These spores are like tiny seeds, but they don't contain the same nutrients. Instead, they are designed to be carried by the wind, water, or even animals to new locations. They fly on the wind to new places. This method of dispersal allows them to colonize new areas, sometimes far from the parent plant. When a spore lands in a good spot, it can grow into a new plant. The conditions need to be just right, a bit of moisture, the right temperature, and a suitable substrate. Imagine a tiny spore traveling on the breeze. It drifts through the air carried by the wind until it finds a perfect landing spot. It lands on a damp log. This is an ideal environment for many spores, providing the moisture and nutrients they need to start growing. With a bit of sunshine and rain, it starts to grow. The spore germinates, sending out tiny roots and shoots, beginning its journey to become a full-grown plant. That's the power of spores. They are resilient and resourceful, capable of surviving in a variety of conditions until they find the right place to grow. They help ferns and mosses spread far and wide. This ability to disperse and colonize new areas is crucial for the survival of these plants, especially in changing environments. It's like a magical plant journey. From a tiny, almost invisible spore to a lush green plant, the life cycle of spores is a testament to the wonders of nature. Ferns have those beautiful feathery leaves. They are a sight to behold, especially when you see them in their natural habitat, thriving in the dappled sunlight of a forest. 
Their intricate patterns and delicate structures make them a favorite among plant enthusiasts and nature lovers alike. Have you ever seen them unfurling in the spring? It's a magical process. The tightly coiled fronds, known as fiddleheads, slowly unroll and stretch out, reaching for the light. This transformation is not just a visual treat, but also a crucial part of the fern's life cycle. On the underside of fern leaves, you might find little brown dots. These dots are not just random spots, they are essential for the fern's reproduction. Each dot is a cluster of sporangia, which are tiny structures that produce and contain spores. Those are clusters of sporangia. When the conditions are right, these sporangia release spores into the environment. The spores are incredibly small, almost microscopic, but they hold the potential to grow into a new fern. That's where the spores live. These spores are carried by the wind, water, or even animals to new locations where they can germinate and grow. This method of reproduction allows ferns to spread far and wide, colonizing new areas and ensuring their survival. Mosses are small and green. They love damp places. Unlike ferns, mosses are often found covering the forest floor, rocks, and tree trunks, creating a lush green carpet. Their simple structure allows them to thrive in environments where other plants might struggle. They don't have true roots, stems, or leaves like ferns do. Instead, mosses have structures called rhizoids that anchor them to the substrate. These rhizoids are not true roots, but serve a similar purpose, helping the moss absorb water and nutrients. Mosses have capsules on stalks. These capsules are part of their reproductive system. When the capsules mature, they release spores into the environment, much like ferns do. These capsules are like little containers, they protect the spores until they are ready to be released. The design of these capsules is quite ingenious, ensuring that the spores are dispersed effectively. They hold the spores until they're ready to be released. When the time comes, the capsules open, and the spores are carried away by the wind, water, or even passing animals. The wind carries the spores away, and the cycle continues. This fascinating process ensures that both ferns and mosses can spread far and wide, colonizing new areas and continuing their life cycles. It's a beautiful example of nature's ingenuity and the resilience of these ancient plants. Now, let's talk about cones. When you think of cones, you might picture pine trees. But did you know that other trees have cones too? Conifers like pine, fir, and spruce trees all have cones. Cones are an important part of how these trees reproduce. They protect the seeds inside. Cones come in different shapes and sizes. Some are small and soft while others are big and prickly. Section 5. Male and Female Cones, a perfect pair. Here's a fun fact. Cones can be male or female. It's true. Male cones are usually smaller than female cones. They produce pollen, Pollen is a fine powdery substance. It's like the plant version of flower pollen. Female cones are larger and have scales. The scales protect the ovules, which contain the plant's eggs. The wind carries pollen from the male cones to the female cones. This is called pollination, and it's a crucial step in conifer reproduction. Section six, from pollination to tiny trees, the cone story. Once the pollen reaches the female cone, something amazing happens. The pollen fertilizes the ovules. The fertilized ovules develop into seeds. The cone protects the seeds as they grow. When the seeds are mature, the cone opens up. The wind then carries the seeds away. If a seed lands in a suitable environment, it will germinate and grow into a new tree. It's like a tiny tree waiting to be planted. Section seven, spores versus seeds, two ways to grow. We've learned about two amazing ways that non-flowering plants reproduce, spores and cones. Both methods are super cool, but they are also different. Spores are tiny and light, and they are dispersed by the wind. They can travel long distances. Seeds are larger and heavier than spores. They have a protective coat and a food supply. Conifers have developed this special way to protect their seeds and give them the best chance of survival. Section 8. Keep exploring. 
the adventure continues. The world of plants is full of wonders. From tiny spores to sturdy cones, non-flowering plants have incredible ways of reproducing. Next time you see a fern, moss, or pine tree, take a closer look. Remember the amazing journey of spores and seeds. Keep exploring, keep learning, and always be amazed by the wonders of the natural world.